Were you told you were shy? Do you identify as shy? Do you hate that word now? Do you just wish you could get over it and get on with your life? Welcome to Shining Beyond Shy, empowering you to create a greater life than you ever thought was possible. With your Shining Beyond Shy host, Fiona Cups. Hi, everybody. Fiona Katz here, your host for Shining Beyond Chai. How does it get better than this? And this week's topic is enjoyment. So let's start with enjoyment and shy people. <laughs> this is a shy podcast after all. Um, so when I was little, I learned as we've talked about in other episodes and maybe you have similar um, stories of growing up i learned to be below the radar i learned to live my life in a way that didn't get me noticed and quite honestly that had nothing at all to do with whether i was enjoying my life i don't think i even thought about that it was kind of like oh can i get through it and then, I mean, I did have things that I totally enjoyed. It's like I would be out in the woods playing witches and fairies and things. I mean, I, so it's not that I didn't have at all things that I enjoyed, but that was kind of separate from what I saw as my real life. That was something that I created for myself. <laughs> Good creation. Um, so in terms of my real life, I had no information on how to create it as something enjoyable. And even if I had had that information, I probably wouldn't have chosen to create it as something enjoyable. Because when I start, when I was enjoying myself, that was what triggered my dad to be nasty, really. He, he didn't, he wanted, he had conformed and he wanted me and my brother to conform. That's one way of looking at it. And yeah, so I had no information about enjoyment and did not include that at all. <clears throat> and again, it's not true to say that I didn't include it at all. So I was bright. And so the message I got was, oh, you're academic, you should do blah, blah, blah. And so I ended up studying, fortunately, French and German. So French and German academic subjects, but also allow for that <laughs> of course, that is je ne sais quoi. So it allows for that. Um, well, it, it allowed my creativity. It's like I used to love going to France, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, speaking French and German and interacting with people. And I loved that in my teens and 20s. And to be honest, still do. Haven't had that in my life so much recently, but I love it. And, and yet, when it came, so that was, I, so I actually created having um, quite a good time at university as well. But when it came to something quote unquote more serious, <laughs> like my life and my career, I was told I had three choices, lawyer, accountant, doctor. So doctor was definitely not there for me or my brother. We weren't science heads. <laughs> we were definitely more artistic and linguists and so my brother chose being a lawyer and still is a lawyer I chose being an accountant and again I found some ways to enjoy being an accountant speaking French and German I always had these international jobs where I'd whiz around and be speaking French and German but the was my life moment by moment fun and enjoyable? I would say no, it wasn't. There are aspects that were fun and enjoyable. And I probably had more fun and more enjoyment than a lot of accountants. But was that it, when I came to access consciousness and found out that Gary Douglas was saying, the purpose of life is to have fun, I was like, wow, that's amazing. I haven't heard anything like that. I'd heard plenty of spiritual things, the purpose of, of life is enlightenment and then endless discussions about what enlightenment might or might not be and whether we were good enough to be enlightened, all that kind of stuff. Um, but to hear it that simple, it's just about having fun. Oh, wow. Wow. Just about having fun. And 
when I first, so the, the process of stepping into more fun for me began when I was very, very ill and found out about energy healing. And with energy healing, I started to express me more. I started to find out that I love to sing, that I love to dance. I had no idea that I loved dancing. I shied away from dancing. I, I hated people looking at my body. I hated that I couldn't dance, or at least that was what my judgment was. And as I came out of all of this through the healing work, I discovered that I love to express myself with dance and with music and with singing. And so when I came to Access Consciousness, I had already had what most people would call miracles in their lives. I had recovered from this seemingly incurable illness, chronic fatigue syndrome, you're not supposed to be able to recover from it. Maybe you can learn to manage it, but to be actually full of vitality, full of beans, full of bounce, actually not supposed to be possible. So I was pretty pleased with where I was when I found Access Consciousness. And the simple tools of Access Consciousness showed me very, very quickly where actually there were still big areas of my life where I was totally zoned out. I wasn't even aware if I was enjoying or not enjoying. I was just not present with them. And there were big areas of my lives, including the zoned out ones, which really weren't that much fun. Yes, I had way more fun than I had, obviously. <laughs> but it was like it was isolated pockets of fun. And what's occurred for me with Access Consciousness and um, Right Voice for You as well, so these are the programs within Access Consciousness. Um, in fact, let me say that different. So Right Voice for You is part of Access Consciousness and Access Consciousness are the tools that I now use and teach to empower people to, um, to get through shyness, to get, to get, well, to shine beyond shy. So, where was I? I've completely distracted myself. <laughs> this is where we see that the podcast is real time. I do not plan it um, and I do not prepare it. And now I'm not sure where I am. So do you know what? I'm going to use a tool of access consciousness to bring me back. So anything that doesn't allow me to have the thread of where I was, I destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pod and pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So yeah, I was talking about fun and as time has gone on, particularly during the time of COVID, it's almost like this time where we, there's been so much that we weren't able to do. And then for me, there's been times where it's been possible to do more. And <clears throat> where I am in Zagreb at the moment, there are quite a few possibilities for more. And I've had possibilities for more with creating classes and traveling. But it's put me to this space of what do I actually desire in my life? What do I really want to have? And one of the things that really brings me alive is dance and movement. So when I was in Zagreb two months ago for Dr. Dane Heer's class, I went dancing a couple of times. I totally loved it. And I just, well, I just chose to come back here because, well, I, I like the city. I like the way the people are here in general. And <clears throat> I love dancing. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna come back. So a couple of months later, here I am. And the, I'm, I've been doing a free form dance, five rhythms every week, and sometimes more than once a week. And this week I've started to dance salsa and that's uh, twice a week. And I'm so happy it's bringing my body alive. It's, it's contributing to everything else. So my point of view had been, oh, I need to, now that I can't do live classes or I can't rely on live classes, I need to set up my online business. And you know what I'll do? I'll go somewhere cheap where I can save a bit of money while I get my online business working. And then once it's done, I can be anywhere in the world and I'll have the money coming in. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. It's like, I'm now choosing to be in Croatia, which is more expensive than the countries that I've been in before. Still, it's cheaper than a lot of places on the planet, but um, more expensive than some of the places I've been before. And yeah, spending quite a lot of time um, dancing. And um, I also have the chance to have more bars and body work here. And when I am working on my online business, it's, 
that energy of the dance I'm noticing is coming into everything I'm doing. And I'm enjoying way more what I'm doing on my business. I'm more present with my business. And I mean, like today is a really good example. I'm going out at 7.30 to go dancing and I had some meetings during the day and I had a load of things that I need to do for the different things that are going on. And I'm like, okay, boom, 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 boom. I'll do this thing, this, this, this. And in, sometimes when I've been traveling, I've been like, oh, when I get up at whatever time in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning until midnight, I've just got this space. Not all the time, but I've had times when I've had that. And this is the space where things can take ages to get done. And um, for me, I could go into that sort of low mood and stuckness. Not fun. <laughs> and there's another thing that we talk about in Access Consciousness, and that is that money follows joy. So my idea of making myself live somewhere just because it was cheap um, and it's not, I mean, I'm exaggerating. It wasn't quite like that, but there was definitely an element to that in what I chose summer of 2021. It's never going to work. At least it isn't for me. It's like if it's, if what I'm doing isn't sustainably fun, it's, or isn't, doesn't continue to be fun. I don't continue to do it. I know me. <laughs> Can't make myself do stuff. Even when I require the money, can't really make myself do stuff like that. So choosing to be somewhere where there's a lot of fun things going on and choosing to really ask questions about my business or to my business, hey business, what would you like? And it's funny, I'm gonna, oh, well, I'm Shining Beyond Shy podcast. This really lights me up to see people who were suffering in this, who are suffering in the way that I did with shyness, to see them, stepping out of the shyness, to see them, see them come into creation, to see them coming into shining. And I say then, it may be some of you who are listening, who are already having that, or who are gonna have, or who are gonna step into more of that. I totally love this. It, it, it brings me alive. I love to know that, that other people are daring to express themselves, daring to say what's true for them, daring to create their life in a way that works for them, on at this crazy time on our beautiful planet when the basic message is shut up and stay behind your mask shut up and comply shut up and have your vaccine that's the basic message going on and these tools can empower people to choose their lives and have back to our theme enjoyable lives so this is my thing for 2022 I realized that I'm really going to test this. It's not a theory, but let's just say it. I'm really going to find out for myself <laughs> my own experience. Is it actually true that money follows joy? If I actually prioritize living somewhere where I can have these joyful experiences and many joyful experiences, will the money actually come in? And I realize I still need to make choices to bring the money in. It isn't that I'm going to be dancing from seven in the morning until midnight and the money just arrives, although maybe it could, who knows? <laughs> I'll let you know. But just choosing to, yeah, to live this life that is really me at the moment. And I say at the moment because when I was, I had many times when I was in Montenegro where my life totally worked for me. The beginning of the lockdown, spending loads of time outside with the um, pine trees and the olive trees and the sea and the rocks, totally worked for me. I'm in a different space now. <laughs> I'm really craving um, to be with people, to have that kind of, um, well, to, to have that more high vibe of the music and the dancing and the people. And to be quite honest, it's like last night in Salsa, so we're still on the very beginning. <laughs> and basically, you, the, um, the, the women, you end up dancing with everybody because the men move, move around every time there's a new instruction or a new bit of music. And we're right at the beginning, so we're only dancing for a minute or two with one partner. And I was like, 
I, I haven't had much um, other than bars and body work. I haven't had the chance <laughs> to just be held by a man and be whizzed round. So just being in this class and having, you know, whatever it is, 10, 10 different interactions with 10 different men, who, by the way, mainly I can't speak to, mainly they're speaking Croatian. Also, a lot of them can speak English, but that's... The, the point I'm making is it's about the interaction, it's about the touch, it's the nurturing. And I'm just like, that's really enjoyable for me at the moment. Will it continue to be that? Well, let's see, let's see. It may be in a month's time, I'm like, you know what, I'm craving some olive trees. That's great, Montenegro's down the road. Or it may be, you know what, it's got a bit cold here and I'm actually gonna be going to Kuwait and Dubai in March. So, but here I am now in the middle of January, and this is what's suiting me. This is what's total fun. And I'm asking to enjoy my life moment by moment, not to have those zonings out, and to really look at what nurtures me. Oh, the dance really nurtures me. The dance brings me alive. I'm going to prioritize that. And it's not to the detriment of everything else I'm doing. I was just having a conversation with um, my VA and I was saying, look, um, I, I would, the, these nights are the nights I'm dancing, let's move things around. And I've got, I have a business done different class coming up in a couple of weeks time. And it's like, no, of course I'll be there for the business done different class facilitating. I won't be dancing those evenings, I'll miss it, but I won't be dancing those evenings. How does it get better than that? Um, so, but other things that are easier to move around, yes, I will move them around. So what, and I'm, I'm just going to invite you to ask yourselves, are you prioritizing enjoyment? Are you prioritizing having fun in your life? Is it something you even feel, think about? And does it feel true to you that the purpose of life is to have fun? That may not even feel true for you. For me, when I first heard it, well, first of all, I laughed. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, oh, okay. Feels true to me. I may be a long way away from it at the moment. And when I first heard it, it was like, oh, that's a target for my life. I would like that. And then and years later, I am still not there. I mean, maybe it's something that we continue to move towards. Maybe there's always room for more enjoyment, more hedonism, more magic, more fun, more joy. And it's funny because I think the kind of hippie version of that is, oh, well, I'll sit on the beach and not do much. Or And for me, it's not that. Like I said, it's like it brings me a lot of joy to do the work that I do. And, um, and I'm willing to put the time in to... Um, well, to, to create the business of facilitating people, if that makes sense. It's like I'm, there's, there are some things in my business that may not be entirely joyful for me to be doing. And some of them I'll give to other people, which is great. And, um, and some of them I'm just like, actually, you know what? I have to do this. This podcast, by the way, is part of the enjoyable things. If you can't tell, <laughs> I really love doing this podcast every week. So, yeah, just ask yourselves, am I enjoying? Could I enjoy more? What would it take for me to enjoy more? And if you're like me um, years ago, and still I'm finding out what's true for me, just ask, hey, universe, show me what's enjoyable for me. Show me the energy of my life. I love that question. Universe, show me the energy of my life. And then be willing to follow that. When I came from Montenegro to Croatia, um, three months ago to come to Dr. Dane Hill's classes. I had no idea that I'd be coming back to Zagreb and spending six or seven weeks. And, you know, I may come back here, who knows? Um, I had no idea. I had actually, to be honest, I actually decided, <laughs> it's so funny, I actually decided I didn't like Croatia. So in 2020, when I left um, Montenegro after five months of rocks and trees, I um, came to came along the coast to Split, and it was 
I think it was July or August, and Split is a coastal town in um, southern Croatia, and it was packed with people. And to be honest, it was packed with a lot of stupid drunk people, people who had been kept inside behind their masks uh, during the time of COVID, who were like, woohoo, we're out. And there was a lot of drinking and stupidity going on. And I was like, oh, I mean, just notice, don't do this, boys and girls, don't do this. But it's like, I was like, oh, no, 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 I don't like Croatia. I really like Montenegro. I don't like Croatia. And I was so surprised when I came to Zagreb and immediately my body felt relaxed. Immediately I started receiving from the buildings. And as I said, the Croatian people are so easy to be around, so relaxed, so friendly. And um, I had no idea that I'd be spending time here. And I've just had this last thing come into my head <laughs> to say this is really not planned. So last night at the end of the salsa class, I went up to the teacher and basically they'd said to me, look, we'll say the important things in English. We get it. You don't speak Croatian, but just make sure you can see the teacher and the important things we'll say for you in English. And basically they don't. He doesn't say anything in English. And actually, to be honest, it's fine for me. It's beyond fine, because it means that my body has to follow his body or the other women's bodies. And it's easier for me than having the instructions in my head and figuring out how to do it. It's actually way easier than a lot of times I've learned um, dance with steps. How does it get better than that? So I wanted just to thank him at the end of the evening. And really, my message was, thank you. I've enjoyed this so much. And I said, thank you, I've enjoyed this so much. And he was like, okay, so if you want, and he's, I mean, he's a really high vibe, fun guy. And he was like, hey, if you want to get better, you can do this, this, and this. I'll give you the name of somebody in London. I was like, oh, I don't live in London. But he was like, he was immediately going to, how can you improve your salsa? And all I was saying was, wow, I so enjoyed it. And I'm not saying that I don't want to improve my salsa. I get that if I improve, I will enjoy more. <laughs> so why wouldn't I? But for me, the important thing in being there isn't to get the steps perfect, it's to enjoy. So let me leave you with this question. What enjoyment are you refusing that you truly could be choosing that if you would choose it would change everything in your life? Okay, beautiful people. I will see you next week. Wishing you a week of too much fun, too much enjoyment, too much laughter. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I'm so grateful for you. It would be great if you could subscribe. Great if you could even review wherever you're listening. And if you'd like some quick, simple tips to overcome shyness wherever you are, please go to my website, fiancuts.com, where you can download my free product, 5 Steps to Overcoming Shyness, wherever you are. Thank you again, and see you next time.